Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. We want to have a biblical world view. So many voices around us telling us what to think, what to believe. Pastor Greg Laurie says, resist that. Don't just go with your emotions because your emotions can mislead you. Don't just go with your heart because your heart can mislead you. Certainly don't go with culture because that will mislead you. Go with the Bible. It will never take you in the wrong direction. Learn to think biblically. This is the day when the lost are found. In the information age, facts and figures come at us faster than we can absorb, and opinions, suppositions, rumors, and innuendos fly screaming at us from every form of media, especially social media. So where do we find an escape? Today on A New Beginning, Pastor Greg Laurie points out our respite is right in the pages of God's Word. Not only do we find solace, we find the soothing salve of Scripture. Today, let's ponder on things above. The title of my message is The Biblical Worldview on Salvation. So I want you to turn in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 is our text. And sometimes people ask me, Greg, what happened to your hair? But after that, they do ask that. But, but after that, they'll say, Why do you do these crusades? Because, you know, honestly, they are a lot of work. There's months of prayer and planning and more prayer and more work and money and more prayer that is involved. Our, our, our team works tirelessly, putting in hours and hours. Why do we do this? It's a very simple answer. We do this so people can be saved. So people can be saved from their sin because when it's all said and done there's nothing more important than people coming into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. And I love the word saved. Saved. Salvation. Because that's exactly what happens. By the way that's a biblical word. It is used many times. In fact in Romans 10, 9 to 10 it says if you will declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and you are justified, and it is with your mouth you profess your faith and you are saved. When Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost, he said to the people gathered, be saved from this perverse generation. Then later on in Acts 2 we read, the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Then in Acts 2.21 it says, whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Hebrews 7.25 says he's able to save completely those who come to God through him. It's a perfect description because that's what it is. You're being saved. Uh, It's a phrase we would use if a lifeguard rescued a person or if a firefighter ran into a burning building and brought someone out, we would say they were saved. And when we go and share our faith and someone believes in Jesus, literally, if they put their trust in Him, they are being saved in the truest sense of what that word means. Well, we're in this new series. We're calling it Worldview. And the objective of this series is to help us to learn how to think biblically. See, everybody has a worldview. There's no question about that. And your worldview is influenced by many things. It's influenced by culture, your upbringing, your education, or lack thereof, the books you read, or the lack of books you read, uh, the media you expose yourself to. And a worldview is comprehensive. It will affect every area of your life, from your personal morality, to how you spend your money, to your politics, to how you vote even. It affects everything about you. And so what we want to have is a Christian worldview. And more specifically, we want to have a biblical worldview. 
The only way to have a biblical worldview is by studying and memorizing Scripture and spending time in it each and every day. So we run everything through a biblical grid and we ask ourselves the question, what does the Bible say about this? Because sometimes people have an emotional worldview. Uh, they, they base their views on how they feel. And, and you don't want to do that because your emotions can mislead you. You know, sometimes people will say, well, I just go with my heart because the heart wants what the heart wants. What the heck does that even mean? <laughs> Let me tell you something about your heart. <laughs> the Bible says it's deceitfully wicked above all things. Who can know it? So don't just go with your heart because your heart can mislead you. Don't just go with your emotions because your emotions can mislead you. Certainly don't go with culture because that will mislead you. Go with the Bible. It will never take you in the wrong direction. Learn to think biblically. Back to Romans 10 again. If you'll declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart you believe and you're justified and it's with your mouth you profess your faith and are saved. So one of the great benefits uh, of salvation is God justifies us. So what does that mean? That's a word we may use and repeat but we don't necessarily understand it. One aspect of justification means that God has forgiven you of all of your sin but even more He's removed all of the evidence of your sin as well. Now that's important because we've all done things we wish we had not done, right? We've all said things we wish we had not said, but God can forgive us of our sin if we repent of it. And not only does He forgive us, but then He forgets our sin. God says in Hebrews 10, 17, I will never again remember your sins and lawless deeds. Now let's understand, God is omniscient, which means He knows all things. So it's not like God is literally forgetting things, but it means that He is choosing to not hold those things against you. Sort of like when you're having conflicts with your spouse in marriage and, and they bring up something you did like 30 years ago. Well, remember that time you said this to me? Seriously, that was 30 years ago. Can you just let it go? See, that's what it means to forgive and forget that you don't keep an account of all those things and bring them up over and over. So God says, I choose to no longer remember that thing that you did that was a sin against me, an affront to me. If that's all justification was, that would be more than enough. No wonder the Bible calls it so great a salvation in Hebrews 2, 3. But that is not all there is. Because in addition to that, God has placed the righteousness of Jesus Christ into my spiritual bank account, so to speak. Uh, the Bible tells us in Philippians 3, 9, being found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. You see, I am a righteous man. You say, well, Greg, I don't know. I, I, you know I, I saw how you drove earlier today. Wait, I didn't say I always do righteous things. But I am positionally righteous before God. Uh, and this is true of every Christian. Because the day I believed, He removed my sin. He forgave my sin. He forgot my sin. He removed every trace of my sin. And in the place of that, He put the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's what it means to be justified. Thanks for joining us for A New Beginning with Pastor Greg Laurie, Senior Pastor of Harvest Christian Fellowship in Riverside, California. Today, Pastor Greg is giving a biblical view of sin, salvation, and our standing before God. We know salvation is a gift from God. So what does it mean to work out our own salvation? Well, Pastor Greg answers that as we continue. Here's the problem. We know these things. We say these things. But do we live like saved people? 
Because sometimes you don't see the impact of one's salvation on a person's lifestyle or on their choices. They'll say, oh yes, I love the Lord, but they'll do things that seem to contradict that. They'll say, oh yes, I'm saved, but you wonder, are they really saved? And I think if a person has really met God, there will be evidence in their life. If a person has really come into this encounter with Jesus Christ, you will see the results. And, and this is sort of the transitional moment of what I'm talking about here, where I want to talk about working out your salvation, which will bring us to our text in Philippians. And here's an illustration that will help us to understand it. I read recently in USA Today uh, that there's a lot of lottery tickets that have never been claimed. In fact, this article said there were $46 million uh, waiting for people that bought a ticket and technically won some of that money but never received it because they never brought their ticket in. Uh, they missed the deadline. And they say this happens every year. They have millions of dollars that is never collected. A few years ago there was a $25 million prize here in California that went unclaimed. And by the way, this is not an endorsement of the lottery. <laughs> in fact, I hope you don't spend your money on lottery tickets. But I'm using this merely as an illustration. I read about a man in Pennsylvania who uh, read about time running out on a $20 million lottery prize. And he wondered, wow, I wonder if I bought that ticket. <laughs> Apparently he had bought quite a few. So he went through a bunch of old boxes and sure enough he found the winning ticket and brought it in one day before it expired. And in many ways God has given us something, well, far greater than a lottery ticket. Worth far more than millions of millions of dollars. It's salvation. So what I want to do is I want to take hold of or live out what God has given to me. So let's look at Philippians 2, verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and do of His good pleasure. Work out your own salvation. What does that mean? It means only you can work out your salvation. Wouldn't it be nice if you could hire someone to work out for you? You say, you know what, I don't want to work out. Why don't you go work out for me? Uh, but you can't do that. You have to go work out for yourself. So work out your own salvation. This is not something someone else can do in your place. This is something you must do for yourself. It's a personal choice. But Paul throws in an interesting thought here in verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but more in my absence. So basically Paul is writing to the believers here in Philippi from a prison. He's been arrested. And he can't go and be with them as he was in the past. And so he misses them and they miss him. So basically he's saying, now guys, I'm not with you, but I still want you to work out your own salvation. I think the New Living Translation is helpful here where Paul says, Dearest friends, you were always so careful to follow my instructions when I was with you, but now that I'm away, you must be even more careful to put into action God's saving work in your lives. So here's what Paul is saying, in effect, guys, you need to grow up spiritually. You can't build your spiritual life on me. Don't even for a moment think you guys can go into spiritual cruise control if I'm not personally there for you because it's God that works in you, not Paul. I'm not doing the work in your life. God is doing the work in your life. Now I bring this up because sometimes we can allow people to take the place of God in our life. I'm not going to church if so-and-so isn't speaking. I only go when he speaks. Well, I, I'm not going to do that because I don't, I don't know that person. I only like this person. And we can become far too willing to put a person in the place of God. We can allow our hearts, as one said, to become idle factories. A husband chooses to not go to church uh, because his wife doesn't go anymore. Or maybe the kids don't go to church because their parents don't go anymore. Listen, you need your own relationship with God. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You say, but Greg, uh, my parents were hypocrites or I saw a hypocrite in church. Yeah, get over it. 
Grow up. Put your faith in Christ and follow Him. So Paul's saying, it can't be all about me being there with you because I won't always be there with you, but the Lord always will be there with you. So work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Pastor Greg Laurie with insights on the gift of salvation, but how we also need to work it out ourselves. And there's more to come from this message next time here on A New Beginning. Well, as we've talked about salvation, maybe you've realized that you've never actually said yes to God's free gift of eternal life. Well, Pastor Greg says that invitation is open to everyone. That's right. The Bible says whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So think of it this way. Maybe you're out in a riptide in the ocean and you can't get your footing and you're in trouble and you see a lifeguard. Call out for help and the lifeguard will rescue you. The same is true spiritually. You're drowning in your sin. You need help. Jesus will save you. He will rescue you, but you must call out to him. And you know how you do that? You do it in prayer. So let me just lead you in a simple prayer. And you can pray this prayer after me. You can pray it out loud if you like. And this is where you are calling out to Jesus to save you. Just pray this. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. And I know you are the Savior who died on the cross for my sin and rose again from the dead. Now, Lord, I turn from my sin and I put my faith in you. Be my Savior, my Lord. Be my God and my friend. I choose to follow you from this moment forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, if you just prayed that prayer, I want you to know that Christ himself has come to live inside of you. And I have a resource I want to send you. It's called the New Believer's Bible. So the New Believer's Bible is the New Testament in the New Living Translation with hundreds of notes that I wrote that will encourage you in this commitment you are making to follow Christ. There's some other materials included as well in what we call the New Believer's Growth Pack, but let me get this New Believer's Bible into your hands as quickly as possible. Yeah, we'll be glad to send it all your way, free of any charge, if you've prayed along with Pastor Greg today. Just ask for a New Believers Growth Pack when you call 1-800-PRAY-FOR-ME. That's 1-800-772-936. And you can request to pray with the team too. They would love that opportunity. Call 1-800-772-936 today. Well, next time on A New Beginning, more insight from Pastor Greg's message called The Biblical Worldview on Salvation. Today's message from Pastor Greg Laurie was called The Biblical Worldview on Salvation. If you'd like to listen again, just download the free Vision Christian Media app where it's available as a podcast, along with more inspiring Christian content. Just search your app store for Vision Christian Media. Station sponsor. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.